So I'm going to start with her head and work my way down her body. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to touch your head right now, see if I find any bumps, bruises, or deformities, any bleeding or anything like that. Every now and again, pulling my hand back to see if I find any bleeding or any fluid on my hands. Okay, looking at the ears, the head, coming down along the face, making sure I have symmetry along the face. Okay. Looking at the neck, looking for symmetry, looking at both sides, see if anything's out of the ordinary that I may find or see. Checking the back of the neck, make sure you reach all the way around because at one spot you miss it may be something that's very severe. Checking the shoulders, coming down the arm, checking it very quickly, checking for any bleeding, deformities. Every now and again, pulling your hands back, looking at your patient. Okay, walk around the side. Now, this is very important because you do not want to reach over the person, okay, or slip, trip, or fall on top of the person, which will make it worse for the victim. Checking the other side as I did before. Okay, walking around the other side. Okay, continuing on with the chest coming right down. Checking the ribs also. Moving from the ribs onto the abdomen. We check the sides. And you want to check both sides evenly. And you're just pressing in to see if you have what they call rebound tenderness. Or you feel something that is completely solid in the area that it should not be. <laughs> okay? Okay, so now the abdomen is done. Okay, we're going to move on down to the hips. You want to take the hips and push down and you want to push in. Feeling for any crepitus or any movement of the bones or anything of that nature and always visualizing and looking as well as every now and again looking at the patient's face, okay? Now this is when you have to get really personal also. You have to reach in just to make sure you're not missing any spots for any bloods and feeling around. Okay, take the sheet off. Check for warmth. Okay. Now walk to the other side again. If you get close and personal, look for any blood, deformities, abrasions, bruises. Okay. Check for warmth and movement. Crepitus and movement. Okay, so we've done a head-to-toe survey. The last thing we want to do is check the back. This is generally requires two people in order to assist in terms of moving the patient because you may assume that the person has a neck and back injury. So you would take the arm that you've already checked, okay, and move it up over the person's head. Okay. And as a unison, we'll roll them towards me to make sure I'm in control of her at all times. Okay, keeping her head and neck back straight. Roll towards me. I have her. Okay, check the back of the head again, confirming your findings initially, see if anything has changed along the way, no bleeding, bumps, bruises, or crepitus found, roll back off, no deformities, lay her back down, position of comfort, probably cover her up to give her some decency and keep her warm, and something to consider along the way as you're doing this is to, if she had glasses on or something like that, to give them a sense of security, make sure the glasses go back on the person, just to make sure. And one of the last things you want to note is you have to document any findings that you may have. Do we have any questions? If no questions, what we're going to do right now, I'll help you up right here, and we're going to break off into the groups in order that we can demonstrate on each other and go from there, making sure we understand the head-to-toe survey and the patient assessment portion of this chapter. If no questions, we'll get started on that, okay? All right, thank you.